Danny Segura alongside Brad Pickett, who will be fighting Chico Camus at UFC Fight Night, Edgar versus Swanson. Brad, uh, right after your fight against Ian McCall, you were dabbling between weight classes. You weren't sure if to stay at 125 or go up to 135. Uh, what made you decide to stay at 125? Um, a few things. I wasn't ready, really, to give up on my dream. You know, I, I want to be a world champion. I think that I still have a better chance of reaching that at 125 than I do at one. 35 um, and also the UFC kind of I think they, they want me to stay at that weight class uh, at least for another 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 try so yeah I, I think also I think uh, this is like I made a weight class twice this is my third time of making a weight class I've actually got a little bit smaller now so I'm not as big so the weight cut is not going to be as hard for me this time um, but then, yeah, I see how this fight goes. It's not so much the weight cut now for me, it's the style of fighters that you seem to find in those divisions where at 135, I'll, sit, I'll find a lot more people who are, you know, you know like, disrespect, but play the game and want to trade and fight a little bit more. At, at, at 125, you see it's very much a point scoring way of fighting where people want to hit, get in, get out, move, hit, 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 which is not saying that like, is a bad way, it's a way of winning. But it's just not, not the kind of fights I really look forward to fighting, you know. Now, you said the UFC wanted you to stay at 125. What exactly did, did the UFC say? Um, no, it's just the short Shelby. He kind of like, he likes to stay at the uh, 125, I think, because the, the division is not very massive at the moment. So, obviously, I'm not saying I'm a massive name, but I'm a big enough name within that division, you know, to keep it relevant. Um, so, also, I'm like... I'm the only one in that weight class who's got a, uh, a win over the champion. So you never know if I win this one, win another one, I'm right there, you know. So especially with someone like um, Chris Cariasu got, got uh, even won't even ranked in the top 10, I don't think, and he, he got a title shot. So they're running, the, Demetrius Johnson's running through everyone in that weight class. So they're looking for people, so. Now, uh, what are your thoughts on, on your opponent, Chico Camus? He's dropping down from 135. Um, yeah, as in, uh, he's he's one of those people where he's good everywhere. Kind of like most people now within the sport are. Nothing jumps off at the page of me saying, "Oh, he's a, got, he's really he doesn't excel in my eyes in one area." I think he's well-rounded in in all the areas. You know, uh, he uh, yeah, he's got a good gas tank. He, he wrestles. He, he strikes. You know, his ground looks decent. So he's a very versatile fighter, you know. Uh, he's had five fights in the UFC. He's uh, had five decisions. So he, he's not much of a finisher in my eyes, you know. He, he kind of like gets the job done over over three uh, three rounds, you know. Um, yeah. So I, I, I'm looking forward to the fight. He switches back and forth. He looks like it's not bad footwork, you know. Uh, I'm just hoping that he wants to play the game a little bit and want to get involved in the fight, and so. Uh, Hopefully it's exciting. Um, otherwise, I'm prepared for people now to run now because that's what a lot of people do, always run for me. So now I've been working on that style a little bit more. Now, Ian McCall was supposed to be fighting John Lineker and that was going to determine the number one spot and, and who will be fighting Demetrius Johnson. Uh, it seems Ian McCall has an infection in his blood and, and he won't be fighting. And I'm no doctor, but that sounds pretty serious. Uh, and John Lineker's without an opponent. Uh, do you think if maybe you, you win this fight, you're sort of right back in there and maybe you can fight for a number one spot? Oh, I'm not really looking, I don't like, like I say, look too far ahead. Uh, I need to get this fight and win and uh, keep myself relevant. And uh, wherever it goes from there, goes from there. I'm not, you know, with Ian McCall and Lineker. Lineker was, was here training a little bit, so he's not really someone I, I'd fight, really. And also um, with Ian McCall, you know, I, I, I think that, that fight's going to happen again anyway. So, so. Hopefully they can get that mashed up soon again. Because uh, me, I want to see that fight as a fan. Now, there was a lot of bad blood between you and Ian McCall. A lot of trash talking going back and forth. Uh, but it seemed after the fight you guys were taking pictures and, and were sort of yeah, friends. Kind of like the, first, the first outing, it wasn't much bad blood. I, don't, I mean, the first wasn't much bad blood until he pulled out. And I, and I made a comment. I knew it would happen. And then he took that the wrong way. And... Then he got a little bit heated back and forth, and then, and then but the second tra training camp, he was actually pretty quiet, you know, and so was I, you know, he wasn't too bad. And uh, after the fight, yeah, you know, I mean, fighting, fighting, 
in my eyes, always irons out a lot of differences. You know, you gain respect for someone winning or losing, you know, uh, in, in fighting. So I think he's harmless, you know. I think some he, he, he's, he seeks attention. He loves attention. He admits that himself, so he knows that. Uh, was, I find him quite funny sometimes as well. I thought it was quite funny what he did to uh, Lineker after the weigh-in. You know, I thought that's quite, you know, made me laugh, you know. So he, he's funny as well. Now, uh, it seems... Uh the landscape of England's uh, MMA uh, has changed a bit. You know, names like Dan Hardy, you know, he's not fighting anymore. Uh, Michael Bisping ha hasn't been doing too well. Uh, Ross Pearson recently uh, had some trouble as well. Um, what are your thoughts on, on the landscape of England's uh, MMA? Um, we've still got some great guys, you know. I, I'm with the, we're like, well, we're still there, you know. Uh, Ross Pearson, for me, he was winning that fight until he got clipped. You know, it was unlucky. And also, I don't know if you know about a, a kid called uh, Ro Rocky Ed uh, Leon Edwards that he fought uh, in um, in the Brazil card. Uh, did you see him? He, look, he looks like he looks like Eve Edwards. He fights Southpaw. And he, for me, he won that fight. He, he lost a split decision, but in my eyes, he won. And he's he's a massive talent coming through. Uh, we have some good guys coming through. Luke Barnett's fighting on the same card as me. Uh, you know, he's been doing well at that weight class. You know, so yeah, I'm still in the picture. I'm, I'm still there trying to do the Brits proud. You know, uh, but we have the man. I, I train with a lot of talent back home in my gym, and you know, the, the, fu the future's bright. You know. So what can your fans expect uh, come the fight? Well, they can expect there's always me going out there to try to fight. It always depends on the, my opponent if he because it takes two to tango, so it depends what type of fight he wants to be involved in. But, uh, you know, for me, on my behalf, it would always be me trying to make, make, make the most entertaining fight that I can possible. Well, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck in your fight. Thank you.